Welcome back, this is Dr. Jun Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're gonna to talk about the best way to detox from dopamine. Now, this is part three, so you might wanna watch part one and two to have a better understanding of what we're doing. So today, we're gonna to talk about supplementation and strategies to detox from dopamine. Nutritional support. One is mucuna purines. It's a natural L-dopa and is a precursor to dopamine production. Beta phenyl ethyl amine modulates what we call nigrostriatal pathways and the release of dopamine. Blueberry extract is an antioxidant. It helps to protect the cells that produce dopamine. DL-phenylalanine is an amino acid precursor for dopamine. N-acetyltyrosine is another amino acid precursor. P5P or B6 is critical for dopamine for formation or creation. And then glutathione reserves or precursors. You can take straight up glutathione or like a liposomal glutathione. It's, also, it's very important for uh, cellular oxidative damage. So you want to protect the cells uh, that receive the dopamine as well as produce the dopamine. So this is a great uh, supplement list for helping produce uh, glutathione, I mean dopamine, but it also helps to break down dopamine. So let's get into the catabolism or the breakdown of dopamine. So if you want to break down dopamine, you need methyl donors, things like uh, betaine, hydrochloric acid, folate, uh, folate or folic acid, B12, or even trimethylglycine what we call methyl donors. You also need magnesium, okay, along with an enzyme, COMT, that will help break down dopamine to homovalinic acid, okay? So this is the catabolism, the breakdown. Now, in order to metabolize or synthesize uh, dopamine, you need to manage blood sugar or dysglycemia, because dysglycemia will affect transport proteins that help carry precursors for dopamine into the brain. The, uh, the transport protein is called LNAA. Okay? So this glycemia, insulin resistance, hypoglycemia, all these things can affect the transport protein. You have to manage anemia, iron deficiency, B12 anemia, pernicious anemia. Right? So you need to manage anemia. Another one, there's oftentimes uh, a P5P or a B6 deficiency, especially with alcoholics uh, or people who take certain medications that can deplete B6. You also need folic acid or folate. You'll need methylation, right? I mentioned here methyl donors, but you also need methylation for the synthesis or the uh, buildup of dopamine. Liver disease will also impact um, dopamine because it increases an enzyme that will break down phenylalanine a little bit faster. So you need to make sure you don't have liver disease. So in terms of synthesis, you need to manage all of this. And then receptor binding or sensitivity. You have to have proper levels of testosterone or progesterone in order to have sensitizing effects of the dopamine receptors. So testosterone and progesterone improves the sensitivity of the receptors for dopamine. Okay, Much like insulin resistance, you can get dopamine resistance. For example, if you watch, let's say, the first episode of a Netflix series and you get really excited, you have a dopamine rush and you really enjoy that first episode, as the day goes on, you watch episode two, three, four, five, six, and by the sixth or seventh episode, you don't get the same joy that you had on the first episode. You develop resistance, okay? Also, termination of the signal. You need methylation, right? You need methylation along with magnesium for the termination of the signal. So these are the nutritional protocols that you can utilize. There are many companies that will produce uh, dopamine support in a package form, okay? This formulation was actually made up by Dr. Uh, Karadian. Uh, he has his own company, but 
This is a formulation that he utilizes uh, to help with dopamine production or even sensitivity, and sometimes just to help balance out the dopamine, okay? We can also use this type of package for patients who have maybe Parkinson's or early Parkinson's symptoms. Um, when they're on medications, you can use these nu nutritional supplementation to help when the dopamine medication starts to go down in between dosages. So that's another strategy that you can utilize. Obviously, you wanna to talk to your physician about doing these types of things when you're on other medications. So it's very important to communicate with your physician about what you're doing with supplementation, all right? So here are their strategies. We have supplementation, but here we go. Diet. Diet is crucial to help you detox or manage dopamine highs and lows. So elimination of junk food. So you get that dopamine high every time you have junk food, but it may not last. Okay. So elimination of junk food is crucial to help even things out. You have to increase protein to impact that transport protein, LNAA. This glycemia will also negatively impact that transport protein. So you have to manage this glycemia. And that's part of reducing junk food, right? You have to improve uh, insulin resistance or hypoglycemia or diabetes to have a positive impact on dopamine. Next, you can have increased foods that have phenylalanine, such as beef, cheese, chocolates, eggs, fish, turkey. Now, if you have a dairy sensitivity or you have issues with certain proteins, obviously you wanna switch those out, but essentially certain proteins will have uh, phenylalanine, which will help uh, with that transfer protein and the precursors to make dopamine, okay. Habits, cold plunges. Okay. Cold plunges will increase by 200% your dopamine levels, it's, but it's a long arc. What I mean is the dopamine doesn't just go shooting up. It takes a little while, but it will go and, and cre creep up about 200%. It's like taking a hit of cocaine basically, but it's not addictive in that way. Exercise will increase it by 100 to 200% also. So vigorous exercise that make you sweat. Intermittent fasting, okay. Intermittent fasting will one, you'll decrease that, you know, the joy of eating foods or junk food, etc. right? So it'll decrease that dopamine hit every time you eat. And then also manage this glycemia. So you can do different types of intermittent fasting. I've done videos on this, you can do uh, eight hour window of eating or six hour, four hours. You can do a three day fast. You can do a lot of different things, but intermittent fasting is another way to reset. And then abstaining. You have to abstain from things that create increased dopamine or dopamine hits. Social media is a big one. Uh, video games, pornography, energy drinks like caffeine and these Red Bulls and all these energy drinks that people are drinking, gambling, and other things that you know spike your dopamine. It might be a different vice for you, but you want to eliminate those vices. Okay. Now, we have this over here. It says dopamine down the side over here. And this was created by Dr. Lemke. She wrote a book called um, Dopamine Nation. So you might want to read that. But I'm going to go ahead and summarize what she says. This dopamine is an acronym and it says data. So the idea is to collect data, objective data as to what activities you're doing, what is the source, what is the duration, what is the frequency of what you're doing. So let's say you have, um, you drink alcohol and you break it down and you go, how many drinks do I have in a day? I have three, okay, and then in a week, it's 21. I have over 21 drinks a week. That's quite a bit. So some people just knowing that they had 21 drinks in a week is a enlightening moment. So you have to collect the data, okay? Objectives. Why is the patient doing these activities? What is it using it to compensate for? You have to figure out that out. What activities are, are, are actually uh, 
that you're doing to stimulate dopamine hits. Problems. What problems does these activities cause? Meaning these activities where you do social media, gambling, all this stuff. What problems does it cause in your life? Abstinence. Once you figure that out, you want to stop the activity. Okay, that's very difficult. Abstinence can be painful. When you go into what we call the dopamine low, uh, you can actually have pain, physical pain, emotional pain. Okay? Uh, Dr. Lemke talks about balancing that seesaw between pain and pleasure. Right? That's why when we talk about cold plunges and exercise, you're actually increasing pain. Right? And then eventually what happens, it'll shift towards dopamine. So it's that fine balance and seesaw of pain and pleasure. Okay. And abstinence will bring you some pain in the beginning, but it will bring it back up and, and level it off, right? Mindfulness, right? Observing how you feel as you start to detox from it. You have to kind of journal and figure out, you know, what has it made me feel um, detoxing from this. Insight. This is crucial because the patient makes a realization. They go, oh my goodness, I haven't had this for, before and I feel so much better in this way, or I had these withdrawal symptoms, and they make the realization, wow, this one habit was causing me um, angst or difficulty in my life. Next steps, changing the habit that was causing you the problems, right? It might be just elimination of the, the habit, it can be, you know, you can, you know, change your relationship to the habit, the timing and frequency in terms of going on social media. You might decide, I'm not going to check my phone. Only once a day will I check my phone for social media and only do it for 10 to 15 minutes max. And that's it. Not check it every five minutes, every time you get a notification. So it's important to turn off those notifications that you get um, when you, know, you get a uh, social media a text or a notification of a, of a post. You have to experiment. Once you do this process, you have to experiment. Can you even incorporate that behavior back? You have to figure out if that behavior is manageable and you can set guidelines and you have to experiment what will work for you. So essentially that is what dopamine stands for in terms of Dr. Lemke's book. But I would highly recommend you go ahead and read that book. It's called Dopamine Nation, okay? Also, there's another doctor, Dr. Karazian, which uh, is a great um, physician and educator. I get a lot of information from Dr. Karazian, uh, his concept of functional medicine and functional neurology. And that's why dopamine falls right into my wheelhouse, because we're talking neurology along with functional medicine. And then... There's a Dr. Uh, Huberman who has taken on um, the idea of the dopamine nation and dopamine detox. Um, he's a Stanford uh, professor and he has some great information about dopamine. So you can listen to his podcast. So there's a lot of good information about utilizing dopamine. At the end of the day, it's about balance. It's about balance in your life, right? When you have dopamine detox and you have abstinence, and really you should do this for 30 days, right? Um, and what do you do when you don't have social media? What do you do when you don't have these vices that give you these dopamine hits? Maybe it's just about getting low dopamine hits, like going for a walk, walking in nature, right? Meditating, reading a good book. Those are all low dopamine hits. And it's good to help, help you, you know, have some level of dopamine without excessive spikes in dopamine, right? So these are the strategies. I'll go ahead and link the video about um, uh, the precursors uh, for dopamine. And I will also link a video on the precursors for glutathione, um, part one and two of dopamine. And I will also put this in the description below because there's a lot of information on this board and what I'll do is I'll make sure all that is written in the description below the video, all right? I just wanna say also thank you to all the viewers and let you know that I actually have a online store available. We'll link that below in the description where you can purchase really high quality supplementation 
uh, what we call physician brands. Uh, uh, we know the quality and, and the uh, availability, availability of these products. And it's a great way to, for you to purchase supplements knowing that it's coming from the right source. And I'll link that uh, link below also. Okay, my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.